Back together again, eh? Yeah. Let's play. Inclusion and what the term Latino, Latine means in the entertainment industry by Anna Cobo. The terms Latino and Hispanic are often confused. Artists like Antonio Banderas and Rosalia are affected. Why being aware of their proper heritage matters. Heard about you. Are you the finger man? Inclusion is such a blurred ground in the entertainment industry because Hollywood often mixes and confuses cultural identity. Identity is defined as the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. But in further thought, identity has become what the world thinks you are. When arriving in another country, that in this case would be the United States, Immigrants are unaware that their identity is about to be shifted and rebranded by everybody except themselves. That document makes you a citizen. This one makes you a private in the Union Army. The difference is that these identities placed on them suddenly shifts their sense of belonging. It is a privilege to be able to choose how people perceive you without further misconception. Hispanic or Latino? Which one is it? Let me explain what the terms Hispanic and Latino really mean. There's confusion about what the term Latino covers and what heritage it specifies, but basically the term Latino refers to the people of Latin American descent. I not a Mexican! Great, what was that all about? Lucy's from El Salvador. So? It's an entirely different country. Back in the day, the term was used for everyone of Latin roots, meaning the people that included Latin in their language, such as Italian and French. But the term has evolved, specifically in the United States, and now it only refers to the people of Latin America. Then, the term Hispanic is used to refer to the Latin community as well, but the difference with this term is that it includes only the Spanish speakers, excluding the countries in Latin and South America that do not speak the language, such as Brazil, Guyana, and Suriname. Now, back to Hollywood. Hollywood has taken a while for it to include the Latin community. Even to this day, it feels like the Latin community is the one forgotten the most. Just inclusion in general has taken way too long. I mean, it took the Academy Awards 29 years before opting to reward a POC for a performance in a leading role. A car is thirsty. Can I please have some water? Sidney Poitier became the first black male to win an Academy Award in 1964. And then, it wasn't until 1988 that a Latino was nominated for the Best Actor category. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even when thinking about the Grammys, you realize how hard the Latin community has had to fight to be where they are. It wasn't until 1994 that Selena won a Grammy, making her the first Latin woman to win the award. Take into account that the first Grammys were held in May 1959. Times are obviously changing, and many categories have now been added to the ceremony. They've also created a prestigious award show dedicated to the Latin community itself, the Latin Grammys. Gente que apoya mi música, intento de verdad. But in the hopes of letting everyone feel like they belong, or pretending to, it feels like inclusion has become this kind of tea box, where the industry wants to force inside and separate each cultural identity. So here's the thing. The term Latin has been seen as inferior for many years. Racial slurs and judgments have even accompanied it. Emiliano Spata. So when people are categorized as such, when they aren't part of the community, the fight for inclusion is totally pointless. Latin heritage and their connection to Spain. There are many actors and musicians of Latin heritage, but there are also several famous ones that come from the country of Spain. Actors like Antonio Banderas, who not long ago was nominated for an Academy Award for his role in Pedro Almodovar's film Pain and Glory. 
No, te habría reconocido. Soy Federico. Federico. Was literally called a person of color. With reason, the internet went crazy because although we love our huge dose of Antonio on our big screen, we do not consider him a Latino and POC. I mean, come on, people. He's from Spain. Estoy flipando en colores. Literally, it is a, I am flipping in colors. Journalist and president of the Los Angeles Film Critics Association, Claudia Puig, said to the LA Times after Antonio was called a POC, I don't think Antonio Banderas qualifies as a person of color. I think he's a wonderful person and a wonderful actor, but he's European. Yes, he is Hispanic because he's from Spain, but he's not from Latin America, so he's not Latino. The hashtag OscarSoWhite was dominating social media and it felt like calling Antonio Banderas a POC was their way out. Maybe. It is problematic to classify influential people as part of a community just for the industry's convenience because it creates a fake window of inclusion. People tend to forget, or maybe they are just unaware, that Spain is to Latin America what Britain is to the USA. Please, let's start to get this right. It is often seen in films, TV, and even in music that representation gets overlooked, and it looks like people are satisfied with the bare minimum and no further research. They have not, but I believe there is one who can. I mean, why is it crucial for an actor to have a perfect British accent, but when it comes to Latino A representation, they get it all wrong? Variety wrote an article on the upcoming film The 355, starring Jessica Chastain and Penelope Cruz. In the piece, the writer insists that Hollywood further perpetuates the idea that all Spanish accents are created equal and every Hispanic is a Latino. Threats, every day, threats. You have an army of men to protect you, but who protects me? What about me? As Penelope Cruz is playing a Colombian woman, it is not by any means that she does not look the part, as it is known that Colombia and most Latin American countries have European heritage. But, because Latin actors keep being shoved under the rug and not asked to be included when playing their own cultures. Even when it comes to the music industry, Rosalia is another name that creates an outrage, not by her means, but because the media and other outlets call her a Latina. Collaborate with on your next album. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> She has been the recipient of many awards in the Latin category, as she has also been part of magazine covers and videos where the Latin community is being called and supposedly represented. Many disagree, stating that she does not represent the community, as she has not felt the struggle and discrimination many Latinos have gone through. Embracing what they are given. It is unfair to be bothered towards the artist because they have a label that they did not claim themselves. It has been given to them by other outlets, and of course, they will not reject it as they feel flattered and love the Latin community. And when I went to Panama, or when I went to Mexico, I feel like I'm at home. So, yeah, I feel Latina. For example, Antonio Banderas embraces the term as he feels that he connects more with the Latin community when he is working in the United States because of his language. As for Rosalia, she believes the culture comes through her music and that she connects with the community because all the cultures have a little of each other inside their music. But I further insist that Latin representation can be deeply hurt when not being properly assigned to its real members.